Restoration of endodontically treated teeth. What's your opinion? About the root canal treatment of lower 7? What do you think? What's your opinion? About these root canal treatments? What do you think? Pretreatment evaluation. Pretreatment evaluation. Before any therapy is initiated, the tooth must be thoroughly evaluated to ensure treatment success, this includes 1. Endodontic evaluation 2. Periodontal evaluation 3. Biomechanical evaluation 4. Aesthetic evaluation 1. Endodontic evaluation The pre-restorative examination should include an inspection of the quality of existing endodontic treatment. New restorations especially complex ones should not be placed on abutment teeth with questionable endodontic prognosis evaluated endodontically treated tooth should exhibit, no sensitivity to percussion or biting pressure. No sensitivity to palpation. No sinus tract. No periodontal probing deeper than 3 mm. No evidence of active inflammatory disease. No radiograph signs of apical periodontitis. 7. Evaluated endodontically treated tooth should exhibit, root canal obturation deficiencies, under or over, poorly instrumented or condensed canal, improper cleaning and shaping untreated, missed, canals. Otherwise retreatment is indicated, if a post is to be used so canals obturated with silver points or other inappropriate filling material, as paste, should be retreated. 8. Periodontal evaluation Maintenance of periodontal health is also critical to the long-term success of endodontically treated teeth. The periodontal condition of the tooth endodontic treatment and restorative phase. The following conditions are critical for treatment success, healthy gingival tissue normal bone architecture and attachment level maintenance of the biological width and feral effect. Periodontal disease should be treated before the placement of coronal restoration. 9. Periodontal Evaluation 10.3. Biomechanical Evaluation, the initial decay or trauma and the root canal therapy, influence the biomechanical status of the tooth and the selection of the restorative materials and procedures. Important factors include, the amount and quality of the remaining tooth structure which are more important to the long-term prognosis than any restorative material properties. The anatomic position of the tooth anterior, aesthetic or posterior, functional the strategic importance of the tooth should be evaluated, maxillary canine, molar. 11.3. Biomechanical evaluation, the occlusal forces on the tooth, which are affected by, type of occlusion, normal occlusion, open bite, cross bite, deep intercuspation type of opposing occlusion, natural teeth, partial or fixed prosthesis. Anticipated future loading on this tooth and whether it is going to be an individual unit. A part of a complex removable or fixed prosthesis and the amount of shear and horizontal forces on the cervical area as in cases of, abutments and removable prosthetic clasps, the restorative requirements of the tooth. 12.4. Aesthetic evaluation, this gingiva may transmit a shadow of the dark root color through the tissue. Metal, carbon, or amalgam dowels can result in unacceptable gingival discoloration. The translucency of all ceramic crowns must be considered in the selection of dowel and build-up materials. 13. Different lines of treatment for root canal treated teeth. 14. Restoration of endodontically treated teeth. The restoration of endodontically treated teeth is a topic that is extensively important and yet remains controversial from many perspectives. Two factors influence the technique of restoring them, one, type of tooth, whether it is an incisor, canine, premola, or molar, two, amount of remaining coronal tooth structure. 15. Classification of remaining dental tissue This classification describes the remaining tooth cavity wall. The minimal length of the cavity wall is 2 mm. A thickness greater than 2 mm provides an amount of hard tissue sufficient to stabilize the core material even after crown preparation. 16. Classification of remaining dental tissue 1. Class I, for remaining cavity walls, access cavity, 
2. Class 2, 3 remaining cavity walls 3. Class 3, 2 remaining cavity walls 4. Class 4, 1 remaining cavity wall 5. Class V, no remaining cavity wall. 17. Class I, 4 remaining cavity walls, access cavity, if all the axial walls of the cavity remain and have a thickness greater than 2 mm it is not necessary to insert posts. Go for a direct restoration. 18. Classes 2, 3 remaining cavity walls treatment in cases involving the loss of 1 cavity walls with small access cavity does not necessarily require the insertion of a post, as the remaining hard tissue provides enough surface for the use of other methods, in case of using adhesive systems. 19. Two cavity wall remains. A ready-made post should be inserted class 3, 2, remaining cavity wall. 20. Only one cavity wall remains a custom-made post should be inserted for aesthetic reasons, non-metal posts are preferred for treatment of anterior teeth. In posterior teeth, both metal posts and non-metal posts are acceptable treatment options class 4, 1, remaining cavity wall. 21. Class V, no remaining cavity wall no cavity wall remains. Insertion of posts is necessary. Feral effect has a great influence on fracture resistance. Deep destruction sufficient feral impossible surgical crown lengthening can be performed or extrusion. 22. Add a keyway to resist rotation of the post slash core. Place the keyway in the bulkiest part of the remaining tooth structure. In of class V, no remaining cavity wall. 23. The ferrule effect The ferrule provides bracing or casing action to protect the integrity of the root. 24. Root length The greater the post length, the better the retention and stress distribution Short root use a short parallel sided threaded post reinforced composite looting agents may compensate for the reduced post length tooth anatomy principle of post selection and preparation. 25. Post length should be, two-thirds of the length of the remaining root. At least 5 mm of gutta percha should be retained apically to ensure a good seal. The post should end halfway between the crestal bone and root apex equal to or greater than the crown length of the restored tooth. 26. Post diameter slash width post diameter should not exceed one-third the root diameter otherwise the tooth will become weaker. It's advisable to maintain a minimum of 1 mm of sound dentin around the post. 27. Canal configuration and post adaptability. 28. Coronal structure that the amount of tooth structure present is more important than the material from which the post and core is fabricated position of the tooth in the arch molar teeth if more than 60% is missing, it should generally be placed only in the largest canal anterior teeth if there is a functional or aesthetic requirement for a full coverage restoration, and post is indicated. 29. Premola teeth All endodontically treated maxillary premolas and most mandibular second premolas should receive cuspal coverage to protect the remaining cusps during occlusion. 30. Post design black small square they may be parallel, tapered, or parallel and tapered combination. Black small square they may be active or passive. Black small square tapered post wedging effect, stress concentration at the coronal portion of the root, and lower retentive strength black small square parallel post stress concentration due unnecessary cutting of apical dentine. Black small square parallel tapered design permits preservation of the dentin at the apex achieves sufficient retention because of parallel design. 31. The highest retention is in the threaded post, followed by the post with a serrated surface. It increased undesirable stresses within the root it's indicated if the available post space is short 5 to 6 mm post material fiber post has a modulus of elasticity that is nearly identical to that of dentin better stress distribution. Base metal and zirconium ceramic, has a high modulus of elasticity forces are transmitted directly from the post to the tooth interface without shock absorption. 32. Bonding ability The bonding of a post to the tooth structure increasing post retention zirconia posts was found to be unsatisfactory. 33. Different between vital and non-vital one, 
it was thought that the dentin in endodontically treated teeth was more brittle because of water loss. 2. It is the loss of structural integrity associated with the access preparation, rather than changes in the dentin, fractures in endodontically treated teeth compared with vital teeth. 3. Large access preparations result in increased cuspal deflection during function. 4. Teeth have a protective feedback mechanism that is lost when the pulp is removed. 34. Ready-made posts. 35. Video. 36 5 mm or 2 thirds length of the root. 37. Dual cure self-adhesive resin cement More recently, self-adhesive resin cements have been introduced, as an alternative to conventional resin-based looting cements. 38. Custom-made posts. 39. Custom-made post and core restoration can be made of cast metal or from zirconia fabricated with CAD-slash-CAM technology. There are two techniques, one. Direct pattern fabricated in the patient's mouth. Two. Indirect pattern fabricated in the dental laboratory. Direct technique with auto-polymerizing or light-polymerized resin is recommend for a single canals with good clinical access. Indirect technique is more appropriate when access is more problematic or for multiple canals. 40. 1. Remove any weak, thin, and slash or unsupported tooth structure. Direct technique. 41. 2. Using progressively larger diameter gates glidden drills remove the gutta percha to the predetermined initial depth, repeat this process as necessary leaving 4 to 5 mm of gutta percha as an apical seal. 42. Try in the preformed plastic post and be sure it goes all the way down the prepared canal without binding, a totally passive fit. Trim it as necessary. Measure the post relative to the depth of the canal with a periodontal probe. 43. Lubricate the canal with Duralay lubricant using the bead brush technique, fill the canal completely with Duralay resin. Use the bristles of a brush, bent at a 45 degree angle for easier access, to force acrylic down the canal and express any trapped air. 44. Immediately, dip the plastic post in acrylic liquid, to soften post and enhance bond of acrylic, and seat it in the canal to its full depth. Move the post up and down in the canal 1 to 2 mm, only after the duralay is nearly set, to avoid getting it locked in. 45. Using hemostats or tweezer, carefully remove the post pattern and inspect it to be sure it is fully formed, with no voids. 46. Cut off the top of the plastic post so that your patient can close completely. 47. Using a large diameter coarse diamond, high speed handpiece at near stall speed with water spray, shape the pattern to ideal preparation form, on the tooth. 48. Using hemostats or tweezer, held mesiodistally, remove the pattern from the tooth. The pattern should not be removed, except one time to check that the post portion is fully formed, until it is completed. There is the risk of breakage each additional time the pattern is removed. 49. Direct technique of custom made post. 50. Custom metal posts. 51. Pattern fabrication with thermoplastic resin, the canal is lubricated and excess lubricant removed with paper points. The post was previously trimmed until its beveled portion protruded about 1.5 to 2 mm above the tooth preparation. A stick of the thermoplastic material is heated. The plastic rod is covered for about two thirds of the anticipated post length. The coated post is inserted and can be removed in 5 to 10 seconds. After any protrusion have been removed, the core is built from autopolymerizing resin and trimmed to ideal tooth preparation form. 52. Indirect procedure, any elastomeric material will make an accurate impression of the root canal. All of the elastomeric impression materials require some form of reinforcement when making a post space impression. Success of the indirect method depends on the accuracy of the impression replicating the internal surface of the prepared root canal. Impression material is injected into the post space, 
and a rigid object is inserted in the canal before the initial set of impression material to strengthen this impression and minimize potential for distortion which includes toothpicks wire, paper clips, and plastic sprues. The indirect method conserves chair time by delegating the pattern for the post and core to a dental laboratory. 53. Indirect procedures for post and core restorations, a mandibular incisors prepared for post and cores. B wire reinforcement coated with tray adhesive C cross section through indirect post space impression D completed impression E definitive cast. 54. 1. Use plastic post or cut pieces of orthodontics wire to length and shape them like the letter J2. Verify the fit of the wire in each canal. It should fit loosely and extend to the full depth of the post space. If the fit is too tight, the impression material will be stripped away from the wire when the impression is removed. 3. Coat the wire with tray adhesive, optional. If subgingival margins are present, tissue displacement may be helpful. Lubricate the canals to facilitate removal of the impression without distortion, dye lubricant is suitable. 55. 4. Using a lentulo spiral, fill the canals with l stomeric impression material. Before loading the impression syringe, verify that the lentulo spiral will cause the material to spiral in an apical direction, clockwise. Pick up a small amount of material with the largest lentulo spiral that fits into the post space. Insert the lentulo spiral with the handpiece at a low rotational speed to slowly carry material into the apical portion of the post space. Then increase handpiece speed and slowly withdraw the lentulo spiral from the post space. This technique prevents the impression material from dragged out. Repeat until the post space is filled. 5. Seat the plastic post or wire reinforcement to the full depth of each post space, use a syringe to fill in more impression material around the prepared teeth and inserts the impression tray 6. Remove the impression, evaluate it and pour the definitive cast. 56. Video. 57. CAD slash CAM zirconia post and core restoration, strong aesthetic post and core restoration can be fabricated from strong zirconia with CAD slash CAM technology. Scanning and digitalization of the impression before the zirconia is milled and sintered in the dental laboratory or can be chair side. One disadvantage of a custom milled zirconia system is the difficulty of removal if an endodontic retreatment is indicated. 58. Software view of digital impression by intraoral digital scanner. 59. Video. 60. Classification of different aesthetic posts. 61. Classifications of posts metallic custom made posts prefabricated posts non-metallic carbon fiber posts zirconia posts fiber reinforced composite posts. 62. The post and core material should be aesthetically compatible with the crown and the surrounding tissues. The use of a custom cast post would compromise aesthetics as the gray tint of the metal may show through the thin root wall. The overlying gingival tissue would also appear darker or grayish. This aesthetic concern has led to the development of aesthetic posts made from reinforced resins or ceramics in an effort to eliminate the color deficiency. 63 one dot carbon fiber reinforced epoxy resin posts it was developed in france and became commercially available in sweden in 1992 it was composed of unidirectional carbon fibers that are 8 mu m in diameter embedded in a resin matrix its properties 1 dot radiolucent 2 dot biocompatible 3 less corrosive than metal posts 4 its placement technique is less invasive due to short post length of 7 to 8 mm with less chance of perforation and less likely to cause fracture of the root when comparing with metal posts. 64. Carbon Fiber Posts 65. The advantages of carbon fiber post, CFP bonded to dentin making it significantly more flexible than metal posts. Disadvantages, inferior strength compared to metal posts radiolucency, which may be impossible to detect radiographically black color. To conceal the black color of the carbon. Corrosion modification, one manufacturer covered the CFP with a white zirconium coating. 66. 2. 
Zirconia posts it is composed of zirconium oxide, a material that has been used in medicine for orthopedic implants. The post is made from fine grain, dense tetragonal zirconium polycrystals TZP. The all zirconium posts properties, one dot quite rigid, with a modulus of elasticity higher than stainless steel 2. High flex ural strength, fracture toughness 3. Radiopaque, however, it possesses optical properties compatible with an all ceramic crowns. 4. Biocompatible, with physical properties similar to steel. 67. The disadvantages, 1. Lower fracture resistance than metal posts 2. Difficult retrieval of the fractured post within the root canal 3. Poor resin bonding capabilities of the post to radicular dentin. These posts are designed for use with a composite core material, but a large composite core may not be sufficiently rigid to support a brittle all ceramic crown. A method of combining this post with IPS Empress pressed glass, lithium phosphate, technology to compensate for the disadvantages of a composite core. Ceramics are tough materials with high compressive strengths, but are brittle when subjected to shearing forces. Because of the inability to bond to this post, a technique has been described whereby a lucite reinforced ceramic core material is pressed to the all zirconium post this provides an adequate bond between the post and the core. 68. Zirconia posts. 69. 3. Woven fiber composite materials a cold glass plasma treated polyethylene multidirectional woven fiber in resin composite was used to provide coronaradicular stabilization. Fiber posts consist of fibers, e.g. carbon, quartz, silica, zircon, or glass, in a matrix based on resins. A coupling agent, probably silane is used to connect the fibers to the resin matrix. Fiber post manufacturers have emphasized the concept that the elastic modulus of the posts should approximate that of radicular dentin. The mechanical properties of fiber reinforced composite materials strongly depend on the load direction and on the structure of the materials. Metal posts have a homogeneous, isotropic, structure, whereas posts made of fiber reinforced composites are anisotropic. The main difference between isotropic and anisotropic is that the properties of isotropic materials are the same in all directions, whereas in anisotropic materials, the properties are direction dependent. 70. Fiber posts. 71. Anatomic posts Further improvement in post adaptation and retention has been attempted with what is known as the anatomic post. These are translucent fiber posts that have been covered by a layer of light curing resin, which allows for individual anatomic shaping of post. These posts offer a better fit than prefabricated posts. 72. One of the solution to provide a better coronal adaptation and retention is covering the post with a layer of light cure composite resin material to allow for individual. 73. The C factor and S factor, stress associated with polymerization shrinkage, are at their highest with post cementation, because of the high number of involved surfaces and no unbounded surfaces. With this anatomical post, if any polymerization shrinkage of composite occurs, it will be at the free space and not in between the tooth and the restoration, neutralizing the S-factor effect. The cement thickness will be minimal and uniform. 74. C-factor It's the ratio of the bonded surfaces to the unbonded or free surface in a tooth preparation polymerization stress in composite resin in relation to configuration of the restoration the higher the C-factor, greater is the potential for bond disruption from polymerization effects. 75. Classification of core materials core for custom made post metal ceramic to zirconia post core for ready made amalgam composite resin modified GIC glass ionomer. 76. Studies have reported that prefabricated metal posts with direct cores made of glass ionomer, composite, or amalgam are less reliable than one piece cast post and core because of the interfaces between the post and core. Bonding techniques are crucial to reinforce the retention of the core to the post head, on the contrary the lack of retentive features of the post head may reduce post to core retention. 77. Monoblock meaning a single unit. 
Replacement monoblocks created in the root canal spaces may be classified as primary, secondary, and tertiary depending on the number of interfaces present between the bonding substrate and the bulk material core. Stresses increased with the number of interfaces, with maximal values for tertiary systems. 78. Endocrown. 79. Endocrown. 80. Endocrown is a monoblack restoration which is a one-piece restoration that used for restoring a severely endodontically molar teeth. It's one of the conservative approaches that has been developed with the advances of adhesive and bonding techniques, it follows the concept of minimally invasive preparation. It gains its retention and stability from anchoring to the internal part of the pulp chamber and on the cavity margins which provides a macromechanical retention gained by opposing the axial wall of the pulp chamber and attaining the micromechanical retention and chemical retention by applying the concept of acid etching and usage of adhesive cementation. Endocrown restoration has two different preparation design, one with a finish line, and one with a butt joint, both are a supergenigival cervical margins which contribute to the preservation of the periodontium, facilitation of impression taking and preservation of sound tooth structures. 81. Its advantages, 1. Providing better aesthetic 2. Better mechanical performance 3. Less removing of sound tooth tissues 4. Less clinical time and replacing the concept of fabrication of total crowns retained by post and core to treat severely destruct posterior teeth which has many disadvantages due to removing of sound tooth structure in order to fit the post into the root canal which might result in root weakness, root perforation, and inducing cracks and stresses on the root surface. 82. It is milled using computer-aided techniques or by molding ceramic materials under pressure. Different materials like felspathic glass ceramic, hybrid composite resin and newest CAD slash CAM, computer aided design slash computer aided manufacturing, resin blocks can be used for fabrication of endocrown. Lithium disilicate, reinforced glass ceramic, IPS Emax Ivaclor Vivident, is used which provides adequate mechanical strength and aesthetics glass ceramic. Glass ceramic has the advantages of biocompatibility and its wear coefficient is close to that of the natural tooth. 83. Endocrown indication successfully root treated molar. Excessive loss of coronal dental tissue and limited interoclusal space. 84. Molar with short calcified canals endocrown indications. 85. Endocrown contraindications para functional habits depth of pulp chamber less than 3 mm if adhesion can't be assured cervical margin less than 2 mm wide. 86. Endocrown advantages less complex, more practical and easier to perform allow minimal tooth wear thus strengthens the tooth preparation design is conservative and biological width is minimal allows re-entry to canals if required without post removal reduce patient cost and chair side time. 87. Endocrown disadvantages risk of debonding. Limitation may be restricted to the ceramic material which must be acid etchable ceramics. Still under research to be used in centrals and premolas. 88. Occlusal preparation The goal in preparation is to achieve an overall reduction in the height of the occlusal surface of at least 2 mm, occlusal clearance of 2 mm, the reduction can be achieved by drilling 2 mm deep grooves as guides the burr is oriented along the major axis of the tooth and held parallel to the occlusal plane in order to prepare the cervical margin. 89. Axial preparation This step primarily involves eliminating undercuts in the access cavity. A cylindrical conical tapered green diamond burr is used to make the coronal pulp chamber and endodontic access cavity continuous removing too much tissue from the pulp chamber walls will reduce their thickness and the width strip of enamel. The depth of the cavity should be at least 3 mm. 90. Polishing the cervical band. Cervical margin before, A, and after, B, polishing. 91. Preparation of the cavity floor The entrance to the pulpal canal is opened. Gutta percha is removed to a depth not exceeding 2 mm to take advantage of the saddle-like anatomy of the cavity floor. This should be done with a non-abrasive instrument to maintain the integrity of the canal's entrance. No drilling of dentin is carried out. 92. 
longevity and effectiveness several studies concluded that endo crowns were more resistant to compressive forces than conventional crowns less stress concentration as one interface is present monoblock restoration more recently finite element analysis highlighted the role of endo crowns in stress distribution